So, who are you? I'm Theo Valich. I'm publisher of Bright Side of News. So, um, did you publish something this morning? Um, yeah, um, I have posted on We Are Zone, which is one of the publications I work with. I have posted the uh, complete details, well, important details of Intel Haswell EX CPU, which is uh, Intel's 2014 CPU. So, you're the only one uh, in the world that knows that, or that's not working for Intel, or how does it work? Um, well, how does it work? It works by, you know, there is um, somebody that goes on online, Facebook, whatever, and posts like we have something that nobody knows, and, you know, then you get like sources and people and so on that, you know, come to you and say, well, that's not exactly true because we have, you know, a first version silicon or something like that, so sooner or later the story will get out. Because at the end of the day, Intel, I mean, Anybody in the hardware industry needs partners. You cannot be a one-stop shop. So, but you need to be modest and know where your place is. So, what's Intel doing? What's Intel doing? Uh, well, to put it mildly, Intel needs to stop their market share bleed. So, right now, Intel is a huge company. They're like on top of the world, CPU-wise, just like Apple is. But people tend to forget that Intel was a $500 billion company in 2000, and yet they're now own, you know, their value is now 100, you know, and they're better than ever. So Intel has to react to the emergence of a GPU, because I mean, when you take a look at the world now, I mean, the GPU everywhere. BMW says, you know, they want to have a GPU in their car, otherwise they're you know, not going to qualify you. Airplanes, same thing. I mean, you need a GPU for videos for. Uh, HD experience for better computational experience. I mean, GPU is at least 10 times as fast as a CPU. So, Intel has to react, and their own GPU, which was codenamed Larrabee, well, that kind of tank, that was a four and a half billion dollar snafu. So, uh, is Intel desperate, or what, what do you think they're thinking? I wouldn't say that Intel is desperate. I would say that Intel is doing all of the right moves, but their problem is that they really need to work with partners. And the way how Intel works is pretty similar to, um, to Microsoft. You work with them for a generation, maybe two, and then, you know, all out of the blue comes their solution. So you need to be cautious, and that is the reason why Intel was forced to launch Medfield, their mobile platform, to compete against ARM with their own reference design. So, and you can only like buy it in China or you can buy it like in Orange in Europe, but currently there is no HTC Medfield, there is no LG, Samsung, and um, I think that Intel needs to work a whole great deal to reach the variety of the ecosystem. I mean, take a look at Qualcomm, how much that company expanded. A couple of years ago, nobody knew about Qualcomm, and they were a multi-billion dollar company, but nobody knew about them. Now, you know, people are saying, oh, they're entering tablets, Windows 8, Android, so we have a very exciting battle ahead. Of course, I cannot forget uh, NVIDIA or what's happening with Chinese. I mean, there is like a bunch of $100 MIPS-based phones and tablets that are just amazing. But uh, what, why? Why is Intel trying to compete with them. Because they have to. It's the war of architectures. I mean, let's be honest. Future is mobile, but future is desktop. Future is servers. And if you only limit yourself to one particular market, you know, let's say Intel did not enter the mobile world with smartphones and tablets and just, you know, decided to build big rigs, big servers. Sooner or later, that would end up like Silicon Graphics, Cray, and all of those MIP CPUs, which are costing tens of thousands of dollars, and now nobody knows about them. They went the way of the dodo birds and dinosaurs. So you have to be top to bottom. Because if Qualcomm is going to enter servers with ARM, um, if um, Dell just made an announcement they're going to make ARM based servers, then you have to react. You have to enter from top to bottom. Plus ARM is very power efficient, and Intel is really well power efficient, but for a smartphone, it needs to get better. 3 watts, not good enough, it needs to be 1. And that means 3 times better than they have it right now. So, why doesn't Intel just license ARM? 
Well, I mean, the, fu the fun part is, Intel still makes ARM CPUs to this day. Because I think back in 2004, 5, 6, uh, don't get me exactly for details, Wikipedia currently don't have access to it, um, they actually sold their ARM division for, I think, $660 million. Yeah, something like that. And they uh, signed a con to Marvel, and they signed a contract that they were going to make those CPUs. So Intel today actually makes ARM CPUs, but they're branded Marvel. And just by accident, those CPUs are going in Dell servers. And one of the biggest Intel customers, if not the biggest one, is Intel. Wait a second, wait a second. Intel makes the Marvel ARM processors? Yeah. In, in, Santa, Cla uh, in Santa Clara. They make, they're making the Marvel Maybe that contract expired, but it was pretty much funny because when I went to see the Intel's fab in Santa Clara, they said, yeah, the only thing that we now make here are the ARM CPUs for Marvell. So, but that was before this whole x86 ARM thing. Started. Don't you think there are people at Intel that are considering the whole idea of, let's say, licensing Cortex-A15 and working on that? Well. In all they don't honesty, have to stop making x86. Well, oh, I think, in all honesty, um, the value and importance of x86, MIPS, uh, ARM, it's all a little bit too, too exaggerated. There is like, you know, alleged battle to death. But the fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter what architecture you run. What matters is software. If Google Android runs on x86, ARM, Marvel, uh, if it runs on a NVIDIA GPU, if it runs on AMD GPU, c consumers, at the end of the day, they don't care on what it runs for as long as it works. So, right now, ARM is the leader in terms of low power. Because ARM has the pluck of working closely with some of the brightest engineers in the industry. Qualcomm, Texas Instruments, Marvell, I mean, even, even in Intel if you want a position like that. So, it is all about how efficient you are. Will Intel create a one watt part that will be amazing? Uh, yes, they will. Because when you put that company's engineering resources and focus on it, you bet your hiney that yes, they're going to come in and they're going to compete. But at the end of the day, what matters for the consumer? Is it Intel so important against you know, AMD, Nvidia, Qualcomm and others? It doesn't matter. Consumer wants to get, you know, take a look at iPad for example. Um, Apple makes their own chips and you know iPad 2 was great I mean I personally don't use Apple products but their iPad 2 was perfectly smooth it was much smoother than Tegra powered Galaxy Tab or something like that but Apple 3 comes out uh, iPad 3 amazing quality graphics I go surf and it start doing the same yeah. issues and all of that as we had with Android tablet. So does that mean that Apple is, you know, should go x86 or anything like that? No, that means that they need to optimize their software. And at the end of the day, who has the best software engineer wins. But uh, it's it's important for the software for there to be an ecosystem, no? Exactly. Everybody should be compatible. When you start being non-compatible, that's when software goes goes bad, no? Well, yes, of course, but, I mean, take a look at software. Um, Tim Sweeney from Epic Games, he said that he wants direct access to hardware, that he wants to program for hardware. And when you have that approach, when you kill that layer, it stops being important, is it MIPS, ARM, x86? It doesn't matter whatever, it's CUDA. Because today's chips are really smart. I mean, previously it was like one plus one, and one minus one is like one cycle. One times one was 19, sorry, seven cycles, and one divided by one was 19 cycles. Today, you have hardware support for very complex instructions like sinus, cosinus, and all that. So, at the end of the day, those chips became really smart. You know, Intel could make a chip that, you know, could do CUDA, that could do ARM, vice versa as well. Because at the end of the day, one of the fastest CPUs of all times was like the Dex Alpha from like 98-99 that did real-time x86 translation and it actually paved the way to move away from CISC to RISC and, you know, did the consumers 
you know, mind the change. That specific set of people that bought Alpha, they didn't. They had Windows NT, worked just like everybody else. And now history repeats itself. But if it doesn't matter which architecture the CPU is, why does Intel make an update? The consumer wouldn't care. Because how many patents, how many engineers Intel has with decades of experience are working on x86? You know, we tend to forget just how hard it is to make silicon. You know, it's not, I don't think that we should say rocket scientist for the smartest guy. I think we should say chip scientist. Because I met engineers at Intel. I have that privilege. I met engineers at ARM, um, at AMD, at NVIDIA. These are some of the brightest people on the planet. I mean, you know, people, you know, on our thumbs, you can fit a chip. And that chip now has seven, eight billion transistors. You know, transistors are now in, at, in atom thickness. And we take all of that for granted. You're recording this on an HD, which pretty much stays steady in your hand. Ten years ago, your camera would cost $200,000. And now it's, it's a commodity part. So, Intel invests a lot in developing the technology, just like Qualcomm, just like everybody else. And I don't think that going a Me Too route, so I have X86, you know, should I go with R? No. You need to do the best that you can. I mean, AMD is probably the closest to go X86 ARM and so on. You know, why just not license or buy the best engineers that you can that have experience with ARM? and engineer arm inside of your product. And when it comes to Intel, we tend to forget that Intel is as big and play-wise as AMD, Qualcomm, uh, Mar probably Marvell and so on. I mean, Intel employs as much people as Microsoft. It's 86, 87,000, Nvidia employs seven, Qualcomm employs 16,000. So 7,000 people is a huge number. 16,000 people is a huge number. I mean, bear in mind, mostly engineers. These are mostly hardware and software companies, but I mean, seriously, 86,000 people. And the investments that Intel makes in biotechnology, in medicine, it's something that I think media does not report enough. And when we on Bright Side of the News do stories about that, we don't get as much traction as we do with, oh, look, you know, a new device, you know, came in and changed something. But at the end of the day, if you ask me what changes the world more, Intel's biomedicine or the next generation iPad or whatever runs an ARM, it doesn't matter. To me, the most brilliant thing that I've seen in the past couple of months is a crazy scientist, you know, we can say rocket scientist, Peter Liu, who created a $40, two PCBs and, you know, one intake for water. He created a system that detects bacteria and, you know, whatever water is safe for drinking or not for 40 bucks using NVIDIA Tech. Does it, you know, really matter to an African village, and I think that they made something like 200 of those, does it really make, you know, if you say of a life, versus, oh, I'm watching a new movie in HD. So, Intel invests a lot in these programs that don't get a lot of benefit, they do get a lot of revenue. But, I just think it's very unfair to call Intel, call just about anybody, you know, say PC is dead or PC gaming is dead and whatever, and PC gaming is overtaking consoles. It, it's just not proper. What Intel does, you know, heads down. Because we all talk about these lovely ARM devices. Here is a question for you. Those ARM devices stream, and they stream videos, and they stream everything. It streams from multi-billion transistor chips, which are created by AMD, Intel, and NVIDIA. So, go, you know, would ARM do well with serving million, two, three users from YouTube? There is a reason why, uh, why Google bought Peakstream, which was one of the GPGPU GPU pioneers, and shifted off YouTube uh, to GPUs. You know, would GPUs be good running ARM? I don't think so. Uh, Intel's databases, they need to serve 
now we can say about billions of users, would that run well on ARM? No. For that you need, you know, what we call big iron. You need real powerful metal. And in terms of performance, you know, I need the best performance in the world, CPU-wise. You know, it's Intel, in some cases it's AMD, I need GPU horsepower, in some cases it's AMD, in some cases it's NVIDIA. If they would go ARM or MIPS and put that compatibility into their specialized hardware, your viewers could not view this video. So, what was actually in your article about Intel? What are they doing? Uh, well, Intel is preparing new architecture, which is codenamed Haswell, and it's gonna come out in 2013 and 2014 for servers. So, how does it work? What is it? Well, it's a new generation of x86 architecture that puts a lot of accent on graphics, on integrating the graphics part, um, because Intel realized and recognized that if you don't have a powerful GPU, you'll go the way of high-performing MIPS RISC CPUs, which is pretty much ex extension. So there's lots of GPU going on. Uh, yes. How many cores and, uh, is the CPU? How many cores is the GPU? How does it work? Uh, well, in terms of Intel server CPUs, uh, they currently don't have a good enough of a GPU, so their server CPUs are without the GPU. That part too is going to change in the near future, so 2013, 2014. Right now their graphics performance is fairly good, in theory and benchmarks, but you know, when you launch like a real-life application, AMD Lano and uh, Trinity uh, are you know, still better choices. Because it doesn't matter what kind of hardware you have, if you don't have drivers that are good enough or drivers that are really optimized for applications. So, what are you looking forward to in uh, the next uh, weeks and months to talk about or see what happens and stuff? Yeah, well, I think that the whole Windows uh, Windows 8. Um, I mean, Ultrabook second generation is here, but I think that the two and a half generations or the third generation with multi-touch screens um, with Windows 8, that's going to be really interesting. It's going to be interesting to see uh, NVIDIA, Qualcomm and others making uh, tablets and clamshells and laptops, so slowly moving into that arena. And, you know, ultimately we don't talk a lot about smart TVs. But there is a lot of effort to make a really usable smart TV. Um, I mean, I have, we have a sister site called Hadi Televisia, HD Television, uh, pretty good creation site, half a million you know, views. And um, these guys have that luck under quotes of testing a lot of uh, HD television, smart TVs, 3D TVs. And uh, there is a lot of room for Qualcomm, TI, NVIDIA, Intel to really come and make that user experience smooth because right now it's pretty much not good enough. It's going to be Google TV, no? Yes, Google TV is one of the projects and at first Google TV used Intel Atom, which was severely... Work. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, Every time that, Google works with Intel, it doesn't work. <laughs> well, I mean, truth to be told, it is true, but... You know, it's easy to do a press release because, you know, one of the best Intel goes with somebody was, you know, Intel goes with BMW and then BMW goes with NVIDIA and now BMW goes with Freescale because the company just cannot decide what their, uh, what their future direction is and, uh, you know, they have a customer that shows up to buy a $50,000 car and he said, well, hey, my iPad has better resolution than your car. So instead of investing in making better displays, they're changing chip vendors. And uh, that's also the fact when projects from Intel, from NVIDIA, you know, when chips enter real products, if there is not enough investment done, those products, you know, pardon me saying, but they do kind of suck. Cool. So uh, let's end on this palace do kind of suck. Uh, fortunately, I don't speak French, but I'm going to say I hope that you haven't said something offensive to my grandfather or mentioned the family in an Italian way.